to be what they expected when yeah. they picked the vent. Oh, they, that, they were so quick on the void. Like, they know exactly what Secret want as far as the Batrider, and I imagine they expect the Shadow Fiend as well. Okay, this is a problem. It's winter. You said Shadow Fiend always loses, Batrider always wins. Is this going to be a draw? Because they're both on the same team. Oh, that, mm, that actually makes them stronger, because I personally feel Batrider plus Shadow Fiend on the same team is a lot of synergy between the two heroes. You lasso into the Rec Room. Okay. Who was it the other day who... Oh, it was IG versus LGD, right? Where they, they instantly picked the Void. Are they going to do the same opening? Because they went back for a Drow as well. That was what IG did versus LGD. They first pick Ven, second pick Void, straight into a Drow. And I think they had a Shadow Fiend in that game, which they're not going to get. Bad. But yeah. uh, it's something we haven't seen at all this series. Maybe it's a hero that isn't on the radar for Secret. Mm -hmm. It kind of feels weird saying this, but I'm a little bit surprised with how fast Secret picked Batrider. Because usually in do or die situations like this, if an enemy goes for an unusual opener in this situation, Five you will generally away. think twice before you go for the obvious choice. Right, like why are they giving us? Why bad? are they Wizard giving us time. bad Shadow Fiend when they pick the Venge? And there is obviously a very clear plan here for Big God. This this opener Venge Venge Void Venge obviously good against Bat Rider. Void is good against Shadow Fiend. So all in all, they kind of counter but it's not like oh wow this is just the dream pick <laughs> against this but i think maybe secret if they went for the bat rider with so much confidence in picking it that early Two i am pick. expecting them to have some sort of plan for where they go further after that else that was just Five very quickly seconds. to pick it into bench we have hurry. seen have pretty good success against the bat rider in previous games Reserve time. i don't know i think Ryan. they might if they if they lose this game and Bat Rider doesn't have a big impact, they're gonna they're gonna maybe regret how fast they can were. Can we first. can we check uh, the win rate of Vengeful versus Bat Rider in this tournament? Ah, the power of on demand stats. Yes, that is great. <laughs> so fourth ban for secret now, and then they're gonna have the next pick coming into this phase. They already have two of their cores. They're gonna ban the lion and oh, immediately pick secret up the witch. Steals the witch doctor. Three and six, so Benchful loses to Bat Rider this tournament. Is that what you? Bat saying? Rider has been winning a lot of games. It wasn't yes. really that highly valued in the group stage, but I feel like he's got to have well over sixty percent win rate. Sixty-seven percent. Almost so, so it's actually on par with his win rate in general. So what is the plan for Big God? The, they pick the Void right away. Do we do we see like a Skyrath here? Are they just going for a really easy killing combo? Skyrath should be the. Next best support after Witch Doctor being snatched away Five for a secret. You want to have a lot of damage if you are running Void as a position tree, just using him for the Chronosphere. How do you feel about having Razor with the Faceless Void? Razor pretty good against Shadow Fiend. Um, we saw Xiao Wei play yesterday, did r yeah. exceptionally well. Yeah. That was the game where they just wrecked uh, EG. It was the one game they won versus them, I believe. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty good Razor game. I'm wondering if they want Tide though. Actually, hmm. I don't think they offlane this void. There is no reason they you would think pick a burning void. No, uh, okay, maybe. well, maybe, <laughs> <laughs> maybe not. Yeah. Maybe. So, what made me think it is not that void can't be run offlane anymore, but I think he's weaker offlane on dire. And I think when you pick void this early, you probably have a strategy built. I would, uh, I would have assumed it was built around the void getting farm. Mm -hmm. And now that they pick a juggernaut together with it, who has has absolutely no obvious synergy. I'm oh. starting to wonder what the what the plan is for Big God with this. If this is just uh, hmm. like it's the last game, we want to try to take Secret by surprise. They don't really seem phased by this void pick. Instantly, just snap picking the Bristle back. Oh, yeah. There's seconds. no direct counter to Bristle yet. Well, Faithless Bristleback is pretty Five bad against Faithless Void really for the reason that he will be in the Chronosphere. He has to be in the front. But at the same time, but he's tanky. He's he not tanky. easy to burst during Chrono. That is true. Although, Faceless Void can make sure that he's going to be looking at his pretty side. Wh what do you think, Winter? What's What is the plan here for Big Gun? Mm, mainly, the Void will be an initi initiating tool for them. And the other reason I could... The I think the biggest reason I would say is just like what Sin mentioned before. He's very good versus Shadow Fiend. And they just want to use that hero against, against Shadow Fiend. And not necessarily they have a plan. Like, they want to farm the Void. But... It's just they pick the hero for the spell against Shadowfin, like the Chronosphere. Yeah, so, I mean, is there anything else besides Skyrath that jumps out at you as a possibility? The Ancient Apparition ban? Oh, okay. there it is. Oh, go Skyrath. Welcome, so ladies and gentlemen, to the International Four.
Void Skyrath every game. <laughs> Void Skyrath and Razor every game. In the game. beginning of the tournament. <laughs> yes. It's funny because there's actually been there's been some stages during this tournament where we've seen some small flashbacks where teams have yes. drafted Ten almost TI4 to lineups, but then TI4, like the best of TI4, mixed with a little bit of flavor Five from this tournament. Yeah. Yeah. We have it right here. The Juggernaut pick together with the Void Skyrath and then, well, arguably also Venge a big pick up this tournament. So they're taking some of the new, some of the old and trying to mix and match. I'm really not sold on this though for Big God. I th I feel like this last pick needs to do a lot of work. I'm worried, as weird as that sounds, when you have a Void, Skyrath, and Juggernaut, I'm, weird, I'm worried if they have enough damage. Wow, well, could always get a Magnus, but then they have to get through the laning stage. Yeah, I feel there has to be some kind of range cop. I how think Quop would actually be a good I pick. was thinking Windrunner. What do you think? Or Windrunner. Quop has more burst damage with the Sonic Wave. Mm hmm. Windrunner could work. Five Windrunner proved to be win very good against Rieselback in that secret versus yeah. uh, Beachy game, I want to yeah, say. Definitely. Um, time. So with the, with the Chronosphere to make sure that Rieselback is locked looking at a specific position, Focus Fire can do a lot. But yeah, Quop is great. It just, these heroes will want to build BKB, Shadow Fiend, Rieselback, Batrider. You make sure that the BKB is not a factor when you get Sonic Wave into it. And they're heroes that want to be on your face. As well, so anything else? There's. I'm not sure though. Xiao Eight likes to run the alchemist, but uh, I don't think it's good this game. No, so probably not. Triple melee core yeah, with, with a chrono. Ball. It's too much. This has to be a ranged hero. Yes. There is. What else is, is this there? The sniper is there. No, it's top. No. no, they would have picked that in first. <laughs> also. There's queen. The queen seems like a very likely choice here with the damage she provides and against BKB heroes. What else is ranged? Terror ray is sort of ranged. Ten um, seconds. Could I mean, there's storm. Yes, I was gonna say. I, I don't know what how great Five his synergy is with Chrono hurry, though. Hurry. I'm not sold on him either. Yeah, me. The, the one that I do like about storm is they have very little lockdown for him. Reserve time. But yeah. I don't know if it really synergizes that well. Do you think they... Uh, oh, oh okay. this actually synergizes pretty well. Yeah. All right, now they have damage. Good. A lot of spell <laughs> damage. A lot of spell damage. Magical damage abounds. Bristleback, very nice. Also good versus Dazzle to burst him before you can even get off his combination of spells. And with, with Skywrath. And that hurts like And hell. good versus Witch Doctor because Zeus doesn't have to really see the Witch Doctor. He can aim towards the Death War and cancel with the Lightning Bolt. I feel like a crucial thing to point out here for Big Gut is they have really strong laning supports and this is big versus the Shadow Fiend because we've seen a lot of times like that Zeus Shadow Fiend 1v1 the Shadow Fiend just gets free farm anyway and if he, the Zeus doesn't have some rotation he stays, it's a farm trade and we the Shadow Fiend's fine with We it. might actually see something like the teams did in the past where when they have something like Skyrath they just run towards middle lane against the Shadow Fiend they drop two or three nukes Ten at the first level to, to make sure he gets a hard yeah. time. And Secret don't really have the best supports. Th they can keep the Shadow Fiend alive, but they can't help him secure his farm the same way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if the Witch Doctor gets an Axe Scepter, then the story can change because Witch Doctor is always the X factor in these lineups where if you overlook him, actually a Chronosphere can work against you instead of in your favor. He's still somewhat countered. They have the swap, which they can choose to use against him instead of that. Every single one of these heroes can cancel the Death Horde. Yes, that's true. Some of them have multiple ways, so... Anyways... In, on paper, it could be a yes. solution. We're gonna wrap up this segment and we're gonna go to the caster. It's going to be Gods and Merlini casting Game 3 of Secret vs. Big God. Playing... Loser will get 4th place. Winner will go to the Loser Bracket Finals versus EG. The game is on. On your way. Here we go, it's Game 3, the decider between Big God and Team Secret. On the dire side, it's going to be Team Big God, the mixed quote-unquote casual team, which has just casually rocked their way up into the top four of a $3 million tournament. Burning are going to be playing One your minute, Juggernaut, Boots first for him. Lan M going to be on your Vengeful Spirit. Ice Sights, the Pup Star, going to be on your Skyrath. Made Zeus in the hands of Xiao Wei, and finally that leaves ROTK Faceless Void in the off lane For the Radiant side, Team Secret. Your all-star mix of Western players going to have Zai on the Bristleback. Puppy playing the Dazzle. Arteezy going to be on your Shadow Fiend. It's going to be the Batrider in the hands of S4. And Kuroki playing your Witch Doctor. Battle for the top lane here. Both teams want this banner in 5v5. Let's go! We fight! Cast going to start bouncing around. It's burning. Maybe going to get hit by it twice. But we get off the Blade Fury in with three Napalm Stacks. Big God cannot fight this one. Race for the bottom rune! <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it's like there's ten heroes. There's ten heroes top for the battery room. That someone's gonna get the bottom one. I feel like this game is highly dependent on which ROTK shows up to play today: the Feed Lord or the Clutch Playmaker. We saw a bit of both last game. Yeah. Um, uh, as much as you can criticize him, he had a few misplays last game, but he made also some clutch plays. So I feel like it can't be the half and half. I feel like the secret I've got that kind of comfort zone draft, the second pick, Faceless Void, came out of nowhere as well. I, I mean, Faceless Void just has a really important job this game. Not getting caught out by bat, counter initiating it against the bat, preventing the Bristleback from getting into your support space, um, Locking down Shadow Fiend so he can easily be bursted down by uh, Skyrath and Zeus. Chronospheres are so important to their lineup this game, and they don't really have that much team fight. I, I mean, Zeus is, does a lot of damage, but in terms of AoE lockdown, that's it. Yep. Zayat top lane will be supported by Puppy on the Dazzle, as he's getting zoned out pretty heavily here. As Big God going to commit both their supports to the safe lane, leaving the mid lane just a pure 1v1 between Shadow Fiend and Zeus, which currently Radio's pretty even 6 CS to the 7 CS, attacked. and Yahweh getting, already mana depleted as well. Crow's getting beat down by Faceless Void. No points in Bash, a little unusual for one that's actually able to get off right clicks. Yeah. Has got the magic stick already to help him just handle the Bat Rider in this lane, and. Shadow out of mana though. And he doesn't actually have enough mana for money for bottles, so this is actually really bad for him because he just needs one more creep. But he's gonna have to wait like a good 20 seconds to get his bottle, so he won't be able to get the two-minute rune with it. Yeah, now Zeus. I mean, one of those heroes you're very familiar with. No talisman first. I feel like normally you go for the full bottle rush here. Is this? Mm, it. I would say that no talisman is not that great of a build, just because you really want your bottle before two minutes, especially when you have better early game supports. Um, but still, his bottle is going to come out at a reasonable pace. I mean, you're not right clicking that much. Um, meh. Oh, bottom lane, RTK gets Maluked up. Five Napalm sacks. He needs to time walk and time walk soon. We'll get back to the T2 tower. S4 still chasing, but decides against going for the dive. That's a lot of stacks. <laughs> Top Zai. Taking heavy harass. He will get healed back up. They don't have a salve. But that is most of the support's mana. Skywrath is completely dry, and he also does not have any clarity. So that's, you know, that's that's a good enough job for your Bristleback Dazzle lane. Bristol can just go back to base, heal up, TP back in, and then have the kind of HP mana advantage, as well as whatever items he wants to pick up from base. It's, it's not only that, it protects Shadow Fiend a lot, because you know Skyrath's not going to be able to gank. He either has yeah. to run all the way back home, and then TP to a lane, or uh, TP home and then walk to a lane to gank. So that's like a good yeah. minute where he's safe. Burning's doing something really cool in this top lane, though. The two supports were just kind of zoning out the Dazzle while the Healing Ward kept them heal healed up. So, like, the supports would trade blows with the Dazzle right click, but the supports effectively were taking zero damage because of that Healing Ward. That's annoying for them. And it looks like they have done a little bit of lane swappage. Zai in the okay. bottom lane will go up against ROTK, and in the jungle we have S4 already taking out a double stack, it looks like. But, I mean, he's only level 4. I guess it's good enough to get some work done. Has got a bottle coming out now as well. Won't finish off the full big camp though, so... Not quite the efficient farm he'd maybe hope for, but he can look to just keep on stacking and uh, building towards kind of that maybe 10, 11 minute blink dagger with the, the good safe lane farm stuff that he did have in lane. So now RTZ has by, like a huge upper hand in the middle. Uh, he... Uh, is he going to be able to secure this rune? Let us see. Looks like Xiao 8 will indeed get it. They got supports were coming nearby. They could have maybe tried to bait RTZ in. RTZ is going to turn and fight. The lightning bolt is there. They need a, need a concussive shot, but Skyrath doesn't have it, I don't think. Very underleveled Skyrath base. He's going to turn and raise now. RTZ has backup. Both supports arrive and Lan M. Maledict is going to seal his fate. Two more right clicks and Witch Doctor Kura gets your first blood. Big God support's just so underleveled, and that kind of rotation just doesn't really work for them. Yeah, if they had a Kong shot, I think he would have died. And th that's one of the things about the Zeus versus Shadow Fiend matchup mid. The, l the matchup's okay, 1 through 4. As soon as Shadow Fiend hits level 5, you can't really do that much. You can't contest runes, really. You can't push out the way fast enough. You can't harass him down because he keeps getting all these runes. And it's just too obvious that uh, Big God is going to try and put some pressure on the Shadow Fiend. And I think the pressure came out a little bit too late, and that's where this offlane dual lane came into play. Well, with that, Seeker, I feel getting a lot of these lanes. They've abandoned the offlane now as uh, RGK in his offlane. Going to get maledicted up, has 10 stick charges and will be fine. He's almost level 6, so could look for a Chronosphere setup with maybe a support rotating in as uh, we'll see. 
Zhao Wei come back towards the middle lane. Look for his level 6. The Zeus ulti with the Chronosphere can add some extra damage for ROTK to have some actual solo kill potential in that bottom lane. They have such good uh, wardage for RTZ in the mid lane. Like, they're protecting both both angles that um, Big God may come from, and they also have not been able to smoke up yet. But it looks like Lanon does have a smoke in his inventory, but still, approaching Shadow Fiend is just a v monumentally difficult task, especially with Puppy uh, around in that area. So Secret, they don't have anyone in the off lane, but I still say their early game is doing very, very well after that first blood and uh, denying Big God a yeah. kill on the ever so important Shadow Fiend. And the other thing is Zeus, one of the heroes, is good at de-warding those Observer Wards, but he's... The, the, the Radiant Wards are not in your kind of standard spots, because he was even throwing Lightning Bots to check the ramp to see if there was a ward on the hill, but having them in slightly different spots, Zhao Wei doesn't find those Observer Wards right away. So Puppy will deny Xiao Wei the bottom rune, and looks like RTZ will get the top rune, so things going better and better for Secret. Uh, how is S4's form? Halfway attack. to his Blink Dagger. That's dangerous. That blink timing is going to be... They, they did see a ward place, though, so that's really important. Okay. Well, well, hard for Zhao to get over there to de-ward it on his own. He's going to have to probably bring him back up if he wants to do so. For now, can just play around it with the knowledge of where it is, and he's doing okay in this mid lane. It looks like bottom lane they're trying to set up a kill. Chronosphere is available with the Skyrath made seen behind. No Mystic Flare, as uh, obviously we're just six and a half minutes in. This Skyrath has been kind of that main support and, and kind of offlane zoner. So right, burning is big. Fun. Burning is well on his way to a 7-minute Mask of Madness phase boost with 47 CS to his name. And S4 trying to stop this push, but it will delay his Blink Dagger just by a little bit. They still have done nothing to shut down Arteezy on the Shadow Fiend. He's actually top of the net worth with the help of that kill earlier on and can also fall back to his neutrals, which he's going to do so now. Radiant Shadow Fiend is extremely difficult to limit the farm of. Last time it was Dire Shadow Fiend, so I think Secret will be much happier that Cypher was first banned and that they secured this much farm for RTZ. Alright, well you mentioned Burning and his farm. We'll see what he can do. He hits level 7, hasn't actually got a TP scroll. Considering he's got Omni Slash, you'd maybe expect for him to look to find an opening to use this cooldown somewhere on the map. But for now, the play is to press this top tier 1 tower. You know, I love so how, much, how much this tournament has changed from the beginning to the end. Who would have thought that we'd see a first band sniper <laughs> in <laughs> the... And Axe ignored. Yeah. Axe was not banned or picked. That was the hero with, like, yeah. Jug, as well as uh, your, your three spin lords, the Troll Warlord. And Troll, like, almost having no impact last game, too. Like, yeah. Lasso gonna come in, our OTK gets pulled into the Witch Doctor, but here comes your Chronosphere. Zhao Wei's gonna have a lot of damage output on top of this one. Can use the ultimate if he needs to. Not, oh, just barely enough. The last Arc Lightning gets the kill. Arteezy trying to rotate in, but the Conk Shot gonna slow him down, and our OTK has a time walk. Will be able to escape. Nice kill. Did cost them two ultimates, but, I mean, that's what those ultis are there for. Or it cost them a Lasso. Lasso is very long cooldown at this point in the game. I'm not exactly sure what his plan was. Maybe if it was, if it were to Zeus instead of the Faceless Void, I could see a play happening, but it's a Faceless Void who had three points in jump and ten magic stick charges. That's a difficult... Oh, burning. Omni Slash. Easy, easy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Couldn't even grave. No time to react. The TP's coming in without an Omni Slash. This is danger, but this is where you need that lasso. S4 may just be able to napalm down Lan M. Double, double raise coming. Easy raises. Napalm, good spell. S4 still up to 1700 gold. Still looking like he'll have a very nice timing on this blink, but... Still, Shadow Fiend has not yet perished this entire game. At the same time, Faces Void's doing, I would say, a little bit better than I expected in the off lane. Uh, I mean, it's ROTK, so he has the potential of getting 10 CS or 50 CS at this point in the game. And <laughs> in between so 0 to 6 deaths. <laughs> <laughs> there's no middle ground, too. It's, it's 0 or 6, really. There's, there's no, like, oh, he died once or twice and got, like, a medium amount of CS. No, it's, it's hit or it's missed. <laughs> and so far this game, it's been... He's been on point. Here comes the backstab from Burning. He's got the Mask of Madness. Arteezy going to be the only one that goes on. Has got the buckler for the extra armor. And with oh, that support, unlikely to get this kill. Requiem being, well, half channel. I like how he threatens him. that a lot of the time, too. And, uh, I mean, that is, it's a nice build from uh, Shadow Fiend. I've, I've seen a lot of Shadow Fiends go non-defensive builds. Or even like a blink into a BKB. Oh no. And this time RTZ actually does throw the ultimate. He solo kills off Xiao Wei. 
Oh my gosh, and Burning now in trouble has just enough, well, has the mana for the Blade through after popping the Magic Stick in. Maledic not going to do too much with the Man. retreat coming in from Jump. Zeus not respecting the move speed slow from Requiem. How much is the move speed slow? Uh, 20? 25%. So it's pretty significant when your Zeus is just sitting on brown boots. Yeah. I'm not exactly sure what he's saving up for. Four staff, maybe. Yules, maybe. But he has not made any uh, sign of what he's going to build. Okay, he will purchase the four staff. So no arcanes up for him. That's I don't really cool. think he needs arcanes anyways. Blink, smoke, TP scroll. He's ready to go. The mid lane will be dewarded now by Big God as they, they keep their Observe Ward on the high ground. They still haven't managed to take out the secret Observe Ward though on the, on the high ground themselves. At least they know it's there. That's, that's really important yeah. because it means that Batrider can lasso easily across the hill. Yeah. That's so kind of the, the next best thing, I think, rather than dewarding. At least S4 has, actually has not used his smoke yet. All right. He's making his way towards mid lane. At the same time, SF has picked up a mech, so a build we don't generally see out of Arteezy as much as some of the other SF players. It's in this good versus this lineup. I am actually really on board yeah. with the mech. Against the Void, the Jug, I mean, a hero that doesn't really have a good answer to Omni Slash. Yeah, um, if he goes Blink BKB or like Yules, even Yules is like mediocre, but it's it, he just has to have some sort of safety oh, blanket. Sneaky play from Big God. I, they went for a two hero smoke, I think, hoping to go for a Roshan. He gets the magic missile off him with an Omni Slash. They get the kill on the S4 bat. That was his Blink Dagger timing. Just as he gets it, they run into him. Yeah, I think. Lottom's positioning and oh. his reflexes too. He like blinked and lassoed and he stunned him before he could. They smoke immediately again. Is this one the one into the Roshan pit? It looks like no, they're actually going to look to make a play with Bonus They Spear. cannot do Roshan yet. Not well, without Juggernaut. Yeah, it was, earlier it was the Jug and the Veg smoking and I think maybe intended to go Roshan, but... I'll take that as tribute. The rest of the team... Uh... They, they can't. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Jug Venge are the two heroes they need. Those are the yeah. two who can actually kill Roshan on their own if they want to. Actually, oh, they actually see them going towards it. I think if Burning goes this way instead of this way, they actually don't know. But they're all they knew that Observer was there their Observer War was there is the thing. So now I think they're gonna actually know that it's up as Matter opposed to how fast they can bring it down. Yeah. I guess they they're not even interested in contesting. Fat Rider is around that area, but it's gonna be far too late for them. Avoid I'm pretty sure Secret Demon is as up. well. That's the other thing. Avoid with a lot of good damage output. And S4 gonna be here too late as Roshan can be flanked. And Burning is off to a fantastic start. Look at his farm. I guess Arteezy's farm is a little All bit better. All the Chronosphere off the mark. Nice reaction Ooh. from S4 with the double click blink. Blinks out, but Jawait's still nearby. Not gonna go for this kill. Nice reactions from S4. Getting away from the Void Chronosphere as RTK puts his ultimate onto cooldown. That means that the world, Seeker's actually able to push, or at least threaten towers. Yeah. Shall we? Getting a lot of good scouting information with this Invis rune. About to expire though. And they don't have any jump without Faceless Void and yeah. ult though. They do go for the bolt here. Uh, TZ just going to take a bit of harass. Has bottle charges as well as the mech though, so not going to be too concerned. So all in all, things... Oh, bottom lane. Uh oh oh. Gone in with a blink lasso and RTK. Brought down by the Bristle in tandem with the Batrider, so... Gotta be careful about how much you give secret. Have you seen Bat to the Future? Is that what he said? <laughs> I think so. I've not heard that line yet in, in all the games that I've casted with Bat. I didn't know that was a line. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a rare one. <laughs> when you think you've heard it all... Well, when ba I guess, yeah, that's when Bat kills Void. Those hero interaction lanes, some of them are a genius. That's what makes Dota, Dota so good. Well, big god now. Looks like Jawait with the, the Staff of Wizardry is going to be picking up a four staff. Similar build we've seen uh, earlier today from, I think it was Sumail going for like a four staff just into a Yules and just going for these kind of utility items to help out with uh, your mobility and survival issues. One hero that's actually way more under farm than I expected is uh, Zai on the Bristleback. He actually only has treads and most of the drums. Yeah. He is a slightly below Faces Void in terms of net worth. And Hasn't they died as well. He's just mm -hmm. didn't get much farm. Well, he he can't really farm that well though, just because Shadow Fiend and Bat Rider take priority in stacks, uh, yep. at least up until this point, and they haven't really been able to stack up the anchors. Although Puppy is on that case right now. Well, to bottom lane we go. Big God with Aegis want to try and take some objectives. Chronosphere will be online fairly soon. 
they have to make use of each and every one of these chronos. Like, make good use. That is, they, I mean, even a solo kill on a bat, I don't even think that's that important. Unless it translates into a tower or a Roshan, but that was post-Roshan. So, like, even if they had gotten that, maybe they get to see one, but they can just straight push it and then threaten even bigger kills. Getting Arteezy, I would say, in particular, especially since he does not have any mobility items. It just feels like Secret are one of those super efficient teams. They are always getting so much farm out of the map, getting the best value, and that's where, yeah, if you're wasting a Chronos V, you suddenly fall 1,000, 2,000 gold behind. You have to you have to play so well to kind of keep up in farm. When you ROTK knows that secret. there's three heroes up here. He you They used okay. a Zeus ult right before. Well, looking to maybe make a play out of it. The big hero that can kill him is the Batrider. So without the Batrider Blink Lasso, he is safe. I mean, pretty much everyone in the big, the, the big god three core heroes can farm fairly aggressively when they know where the Batrider is on the map. Yeah, that is true. They can just TP away from almost anyone else aside from Witch Doctor. There's just no, I mean, there's no other real stuns or initiation. I guess the goo from Bristleback should be your only other real kill threat. I mean, the they, they running in, but yeah, exactly. You TP out, you should be able to handle that. At some well. point, they're going to need BKBs. We have not yet seen a Mystic Flare combo, nor have we seen an Ancient Seal into Zeus, bull, uh, Zeus Burst, and that is a lot of damage that I don't think Secret can cope with without BKBs. I, I mean, I suppose they have Grave and like Heal and Mech, but Zeus's damage output is insane. And here they go with a smoke. Oh, see what Secret looked to try and find here. They're gonna walk right into Zhao 8. Blink last so he has not a swap. Possible. Swap immediately using S4s under the tower. Gets the nice Chronosphere. Catches out three. Puppy in the middle of it. Kuro gonna be the next one target. Actually, Arteezy gets off the mech now. Kuro still getting low. RTK takes a raise or two. Death Ward as well. RTK likely to go down to the Maldic unless he gets some insane backtrack. The earned damage there as well. But a two for one trade. Good Chronosphere coming out and Zhao 8 being kept alive with some nice defensive play. Lan and dies to the last second there. Zeus now going to turn around. The Omni Slash coming to play as well. Arteezy's got no mech left. Yeah, a Burning going to get one more kill. Needs to find, well, something a bit more as far as movement speed if he wants to keep up to the Bristleback. But a 4 for 2 trade in the end. And Man, that... Great fight. Yeah. You know, that wouldn't have happened if Batrider's day daytime vision wasn't nerfed. <laughs> yeah, it's a level 1 swap. Like it, he, w he was flying over the trees and he saw Zeus. It was pretty close range, maybe like 500, 600 range. And then Vengeful Spirit was just sitting right outside of Batrider's field of vision. And not only did he swap to cancel it, he swapped the Batrider in. I d that's your ideal, uh, ideal swap. Generally, you'll see swaps defensively, like on the Zeus. And then you break the lasso, but Batrider walks away free. Uh, just because that's generally how good the Bat Rider's position is and how poor the Ventral Spirit's position is. Yep. But Lana, wow, his positioning right there was impeccable. And of course, ROTK to follow up with a nice Chrono. Although they didn't get that many kills off yeah, of it. The Big God supports have been on point. Skyrath wasn't there, I guess, for the Mystic Flare in, inside the Chronosphere? He did. He Mystic Flared oh, he did. Uh, okay. Dazzle. He killed Dazzle, I believe. Yeah. Well, Big God now get themselves in an even better position. Jug continuing to outfarm your Shadow Fiend by a very small margin. The actual gold difference is quite small right now. The experience a bit larger and we'll see Burning once again go for that Shadow Blade build that he likes on his Jug. It just it just causes so much havoc around the map, especially when Shadow Fiend has this build. He doesn't have... Ooh, bottom lane, Zai gets Mystic Flare. There's your Zeus ult in the Chronosphere as well. And, well, Zai's farm farming troubles continue. I remember when Faces Void was super popular, Alliance uh, tried to experiment a lot with Bristleback versus uh, versus the Faces Void, and they would just try and tank him up. Oh, RTK got caught out, lassoed on the bottom lane. RTK, will he get off a time walk in time? Doesn't look like it. Top lane, it's burning, battling it out with Arteezy, but not a fight he's really winning here. It does have an Omni Slash soon. Gonna pop the Healing Ward and look to maybe re-goose, but... The TP out from Arteezy will keep him safe. They have the very good Observer Wars to protect Arteezy in the top lane. Yeah. But, yeah, Br Bristleback versus Faces Void, it, it's good in theory, but at the same time, like, if you catch Bristleback, he's generally just dead. Um, especially since Faces Void has that, like, incredible move speed inside of Chronosphere. Uh, if your Faces Void has any sort of decent farm, then he'll be able to kill the Bristleback. So, I don't think he's, like, the big uh, tank necessarily that you'll usually see Zai B. Um, generally they like don't play against the Axe and LC when you have the Bristle and then I guess Faces Void is one of the better counters versus him too. Timber decent as well but I don't really see him being able to make that much of an impact but we shall see. 
Burning gonna Shadow Blade forward and no contest over the room from Secret. It does feel like RTK needs to be a bit careful. Plays like that where it's a one for one trade with him and Bristleback sound good, sound okay on paper, but he they spent a lot yeah. of time trying to find the kill. He wasn't farming while Zai was farming, because Zai's actually overtaken him on farm at this point. He by. needs BKB yeah. so he doesn't die. Both him and Zai. And they're both working on a mid lane. There will be another lasso immediately cancelled again. Lamb has been on point with this vengeful spirit play. He really has. This is without really that much vision around the map, too. They don't have a ward in the mid, and Secret also has a sentry ward to make themselves feel a little bit safer about these ganks, but Vengeful Spirit. By the way, Venge with a very interesting skill build. I don't... The 1-1-1-1? One, 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 one. <laughs> I've, never, I've never seen this before. Um, I mean, he's got burning on his team. It's, it's the burning build, so... The it's one, not one, bad. 1-1-1 stats. I, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Puppy? Puppy? Caught out in the jungle here by the Zeus Skyrath combo, and well, that's the uh, ancient seal with the Zeus ultimate damage amplification, and we'll see the tier one tower now looking to be claimed by bur by burning on the jug. Chronosphere is available. They go in looking for Artz. He gets the BKB off. No damage output to follow this up. They're just going to leave him inside. The Omni Sash is there though. Artz gets graved up. He blows up, burning on the jug. Perfectly timed. Requiem has sold. They're going to lose Void as well. Zhao Wei looking to TP out. Lamb will not be so lucky. Three for nothing, they get the tower, but a disaster in the mid lane. That was one of the worst Chronospheres. I thought he was just going to Chrono the Bristle back. It, it probably would have just been better if he chrono and killed the Bristle. Well, they didn't uh, They didn't have Mystic Flare, too. Yeah. I don't exactly know what he was going for. Like, even, even if he hadn't BKB, would that have mattered? I don't think so. Uh, they weren't killing Arteezy. Yeah, they weren't killing Arteezy. He went to super tank build. He has a lot of armor, he has magic immunity, he has a ton of strength, he has 1400 HP, and on top of that, Burning didn't spin after his Omni. I don't actually know if he could have, potentially. Maybe mana pro the Shadow Blade, that's the one, oh, one of yeah, the big yeah, weaknesses, is that you do have mana problems with the Shadow Blade if you're using it to move around the map. Yeah, I, I guess potentially he didn't have it, but, I mean, wow, if they had the Aegis there, it would have been a lot different, but still, ROTK... I, I I guess he needs to be more patient with his Chronospheres, or just e either more patient or less hesitant. Like e either or, he's like kind of in that I'm going to go in, yeah. but it's at the exact wrong moment where they were like he was in a pretty well fortified position too. He was like in this tree area instead of at the T1. At the T1, it's much better for them because everyone's closer and they can follow up. Um, but catching him without or with his BKB up. In that sort of position is is, is terrible. It, it just looked like a fight where they didn't need to use the Chronosphere. They should have just taken the T1 tower and backed off without the Mystic Flare. With Zeus Ultimate also on cooldown, they didn't have the scouting information as well as the extra damage from the Zeus Ultimate. They'd use that to kill Puppy in the jungle. It just it was an unnecessary risk from ROTK. But hey, high risk, high reward has generally been his playstyle and. We'll see how things pan out for here from Big God. That gives Secret a bit of an edge. Roshan has respawned, but... It's such a crucial fight to lose before Roshan. At least they get the tower, but I, and the, at the end of the day, that's certainly not worth it. Now they have BKB up on Zai, and no BKB in sight for ROTK. He is almost has his uh, Mithril Hammer, and here they go. Oh, they, they Zeus sold. They have Vision inside, although it didn't do any damage, but can they actually get a good Chrono Spear into a fight? As for getting some vision here, the Dazzle Weave also being used. ROTK going to lose a lot of his armor off of this. They still want to work on Roshan. Here comes your Void Chronosphere, hits Puppy as well as Zai. That's a decent Chronosphere if they can kill off your Dazzle. No graves to worry about. Now Kuro, his ultimate not getting cancelled. Burning going to go down to the Death Ward. He's Blade Fearing and the Omni Slash did not do what was needed. Lasso going to pull back Zhao Wei. Down will go your Zeus. Unless that four stuff out can save him. But with a Flame Break and the Earn damage, no Blink available for him. ROTK and Ice Ice just hiding on the side as Arteezy will look to finish off Roshan. Man, one bad fight leads to this snowball effect of... Wow, I, I mean, I, I'm speechless at how much of a lead Big Guy just threw away. That is incredible. It was... They got a pick. They could have gotten a T1 and just gotten out. Instead, they lose three heroes for T1, and then they lose the Juggernaut again, and then they lose the Zeus, and on top of that, they, they lose Roshan. So that's like a... I don't know, 7,000, 8,000 gold deck. And it could have potentially been so much better. It sets Secret up for success. They get an Aegis, they get multiple towers, their item progression skyrockets, and meanwhile, Big God... Burning, his Jug, his item progression suddenly just vanishes. He's going to really be struggling to finish his next item or two after dying twice in a row and having very little uptime for the last three or four minutes.
I think that RTZ has been really good about his item builds in uh, in this whole entire tournament. He switches it up often. Uh, the Blink Yules, the Mech, the BKB, Shadow Blade occasionally, uh, Manta if he needs it. Gonna smoke back. ROTK could be in some trouble here. The Blink Lasso is there. No swap available. Zeus will ultimate, but it's too late for ROTK. No Chronosphere available. The time will gap. May be enough to get him back to safety. Are they going to swap him out? They do to the high ground. He's now going to earn himself up. Zaya wants to chase, but instead going to go for Lamb on the Ventral Spirit. Winch off to ultimate on the high ground. And it looks like Zaya with a BKB happy to be nice and aggressive here. They've taken out. They did end up killing off the Void there. Oh dear, double buyback now from Big God. Triple buyback as they lose to Skywrath Mage as well. Arteezy looking for the Requiem, gets Chronosphere, but where's the damage? He got the BKB off. Omni Slash will finish off Arteezy, but he's going to respawn in a second. Zai gets great up. Clutch play from Puppy. Zai still alive for the time being. They don't have the damage to finish him off until finally Zeus does it, but three buybacks, a dieback from your Skywrath Mage. Jub can't do anything. He's got no Omni Slash, and Big God are dying in their own fountain here by the tier fours. Lamb gonna go down to the Maledict if he's not careful. They don't even care if they kill him off at this point. Not enough damage. They actually swap into the fountain. Kuro, he dies there. Someone unnecessarily. Lamb will survive. Big God, very expensive hold. Yeah, they lose like six heroes there. Oof. All of a sudden, secret. Topping the net worth chart in multiple areas. It all started with that ROTK Chrono in the mid. It, I mean, it was on his shoulders this game, and I, I, I'm not sure if you realize the importance of his Chronosphere as that game. They have to be amazing in, in this game, or else Secret will just punish you so heavily for one botched one. I mean, there were two botched ones. One, like, right after the Roche, and then or, uh, Secret ended up getting the mid-tower, too. And it didn't seem like that big of a deal, but that just makes things so much easier for Secret to push into their Anxious and into the Roshan pit uh, for that second contest. Yeah. I mean, you talked to me about Arteezy's itemization. He's completed a Scotty. This game has just been all about tanking up. His, his itemization, his decision-making has been what's probably, to me, most impressive about him this tournament. Known for his kind of mechanics and laning and being such a great farm and all that, but you go back like to the Cloud9 series, that Game 2 decision to TP in and go for the throne. This guy has shown some just incredible decision-making under pressure. Yeah, you really have to ad admire uh, what he's done throughout this whole tournament. Well, Big God, they didn't lose a T3, but they did lose, what, 10,000 net worth in the yeah. past seven or eight minutes? I mean, just look at it. Void is so far down now c compared to where he once was. He was on par with the Bristleback, maybe about 800 to 1,000 net worth behind, but suddenly Bristleback has almost twice his net worth. To be fair, this is a fairly difficult lineup, I think, for Faces Void to, um, to shine in. Uh, just because yep. of a lot of things. The super tanky bristle, 1700 HP, and a fair amount of armor, 18 armor, so he's not he's not easy to kill on top of Bristleback. Uh, they have the Shadow Fiend with ginormous amounts of HP. Um, Witch Doctor Ward, if he doesn't catch Kuro, Kuro will just uh, channel it. If he gets lassoed and Lanham's not close by, he also dies. And then on top of that, if uh -oh. he doesn't catch, catch Puppy, Puppy will just grave. And we saw... Oh, no. Oh, the insta swap from Lamb. Zeus gonna ulti as well. Cancel any follow up blink daggers. BKB from S4. We'll look to slow down Lamb. ROTK has a Chronos here, but getting kills inside that Chrono is very difficult without an Omni Slash or a Mystic Flare. So they'll get the kill on the Ventral Spirit. Kuri, it's gonna be getting the hell out of here. Not easy. Trying to chase it down won't be successful. Now it's it's just getting to that point where uh, everyone has made like decent plays this game, but Juggernaut and Faces Void they they are just too underfarmed at this point uh, relative to Secret. Uh, Juggernaut is three thousand gold behind the Shadow Fiend, and Faces Void is five thousand gold behind the Bristleback. Yeah. It, it just seems like a bit of an odd choice, I mean, to go back to the draft, but the second pick on the Faceless Void, a hero we've seen very little little of all this tournament. I think it can work, but not for ROTK, just because he's not consistent enough on his offlane. Um, and there's there's too much room for error, I would say, yeah. on the Faceless Void. And like Batrider, you, you have some misses, you have some good ones, that's good enough. For uh, Faceless Void, you miss one or two chronos, it's game losing. Or uh, or even have subpar chronos. We'll see what the next move for Secret is. Right now they're probably feeling pretty comfortable. Pushing out this bottom lane, it seems, is going to be 
where they look to take their next angle here. Still no BKB for ROTK, about full 500 gold off of it though, so... They have to play keep away and just be able to farm without getting picked up by Bat. I don't think they can take a 5-on-5 five five on this point, but at the same time, they also can't afford to give Secret another Aegis and uh, Cheese. Aegis and Cheese? Aegis on Shadowfiend and Cheese on Bristle? Or vice versa? That is just exactly what Secret needs to break the high ground. And they're very close to that point. It's not unmanageable for Big God just because of the potential for big chronos, like four band chronos. Um, especially with like Zeus being able to scout them out. But Secret's been doing a very good job of limiting the damage from the chronos, aside from the T1 yeah. in mid. And we've seen Arteezy inside a chronosphere if. Jug can get an Omni Slash on him, he will melt. He can't easily dodge, so he doesn't have a Blink Dagger to get out of there. Even with the Scardi Mech, if you get a Wave of Terror plus a, plus a full Omni Slash on Arteezy, that's his HP gone. So. They probably have to do a little bit more with that, to be honest. He has a lot okay. of armor. Actually, has, yeah, with the Scardi. It's, it's only level 1 Howl, to too. Okay. Or actually, level 2 now. But. That's where it's also surprising. You, you're you so lacking on damage on the Big God side as far as physical damage goes. Having just level 1 now, level 2 Wave of Terror seems like a... Interesting choice from. Well, that. he didn't expect them to be low on damage. I don't think he expected Burning to die a few yeah. times, ROTK to die six times now. And yeah, it's Feast of Famine for ROTK. He was doing well, and then just mishap after mishap. Looks like he will be able to finish a BKB off at least. 100 more gold to find in the middle lane, and. I mean, Shadow Fiend now, like, he can go for Satanic or Butterfly, and that just compounds the problems it's for a, Big Guy. He's got an Eagle Song. He's so far ahead of everyone. No one comes close to him. The Jug is a full 4,000 gold behind. Yeah. And Zeus is just... Not, I mean, we, we haven't even really seen the Zeus. S4 looking for a gank on ROTK, and here he goes again! Oh, another swap. Dyer's Lamb has been on point, and he has been saving their hide. And it's one of those things, like, that's not... Big God aren't baiting ROTK there. The, the Venge is just there in case he gets ganked. It's not like they're using the swap and then turning it around and getting kills on secret. So that puts the swap on cooldown <laughs> as well as the lasso. Gives Big God a little bit of breathing room. Lanums right? knows that ROTK has been in predictably bad positions. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hey. If there's someone you, you think may be getting ganked, generally it's ROTK. When so. Yeah, Bristle and Zai, or sorry, Bristle and Faceless Void were neck to neck in farm. Now he has a Shiva's on top of his BKB. Yes. It's a full tier 4 item ahead. And this is where the damage output's going to get reduced even further. With the Shiva's guard, that's extra armor for him. SF's going to have a butterfly soon, which is evasion as well as just extra agility, so more armor, more attack speed, more damage. Just a bit more survivability against the Omni Slash as well. If Big Guy can somehow get next Roshan, I think they can come back into this game. But Secret, I, I, I mean, if you're in Secret Shoes, you know that that's their only avenue for comeback, is having a big play at Roshan. So all you need to do is just five man around the pit and just secure that area. And it's nine minutes past the last Roshan death, so it's, uh, you know, any time it could respawn now. And Big Guy uses a Zeus ult to scout out. And, I mean, they're, they're just taking no chances. They have Batrider. They own the last Roshan fight, so there's no reason to fret at this point. Yeah. Meanwhile, Big God are going to have to take some chances to get back in this game. RTK goes to the high ground here. Four stuff away. S4 almost overextends a bit there. We'll get back to safety. And there's no buyback on your jug. He just bought a full Scardi, realizing that you can't really be buying back and expecting to win the game at this point. He's got to just use what money he can. And uh, The Chrono is make or break here. It, yeah. It's you win the fight during the Chrono or you lose I feel the like game. to go even more important than the Chronos here is maybe the Omni Slash because that's like, so much of their damage. Blink Slash to sound things off. It's going to be onto Lamb on the Vengeful Spirit. They try and bring him down first. The Chronos V comes out only on S4. Witch Doctor Ultimate onto Burn. There's your Omni Slash. Cancels the Witch Doctor Ultimate. Grave comes out as well. The Omni Slash gets no one. Buyback from Zeus as well as Vengeful Spirit. It looks like Burning going to go down. As said, no buyback for your Juggernaut. And with Lamb going down as well to follow this up, that's a dieback. An ultra kill for Arteezy. It looks all over for Big God. ROTK calls GG. Team Secret advance to the top three and where they'll take on evil geniuses for a spot in the grand finals. Not bad for a casual team though. Not bad at all. Congratulations to Big God. Fourth place. Some mistakes here and there. I, I mean, they played really well in games one and two. This game, not so much. Uh, I guess Lanham played really well, but overall their performance has been better than expected and looks to be the next powerhouse. 
Well, we'll see what happens Casual. to this team. It's, it's, Quote, unquote. it's hard to know what's going to happen with this team if they stick.